Hi there, I'm Mike. What I have for you today is, oh my God, I've never recorded this early before. Ugh. How do people do this? How do people function this early? All right, sorry. Tick two. Hi there, I'm Mike. What I have for you today is Star Wars The Black Series Dryden Voss. I've had this gangster in my collection for over a month, and now it's time to tell you my thoughts on him. Go ahead and take a look at the photo of him while I read the bio on the back of the box. The public face of the Crimson Dawn crime syndicate, Dryden Voss is a contradiction. A pitiless enforcer known as a gangster of wealth and taste. His good manners shouldn't be mistaken for weakness though. He can change from generous host to ruthless killer in a moment. Here he is out of the package and you know what? I mean, he's here. This is him. Dryden Voss is sort of the main antagonist of Solo, a Star Wars story. I say sort of because antagonists become protagonists and protagonists become antagonists and then there's antagonists that you didn't know were controlling things behind the scenes the whole time. It's, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a roller coaster to say the least. The only thing that really stayed constant is this, he's, he's a bad guy. He's the bad guy. Some facts about Dryden Voss, he's rich. He has a cool space yacht called the First Light. He collects a lot of fun artifacts like Sith artifacts and Mandalorian artifacts. Uh, he's played by Paul Bettany in the movie and they nailed his likeness. They got his face down and he has sort of striped striations on his face that are definitely part of him and not clawed marks or scars. They're just kind of who he is. It's definitely not a phase, mom. The colors do change when he gets angry, which is pretty cool, and you can recreate that by sticking this guy in the freezer for a little bit. I know that's sort of the opposite of getting angry. Temperature color changing is a gimmick I haven't seen in an action figure in a long time. A long time. So in terms of looks, I'm going to give him the full point because, I mean, he really matches what he's supposed to look like. He's a dead-on ringer for Paul Bettany and the face printing on here just really brings him to life. The gimmick is cool and it's cool they shoehorned that into a figure. They didn't have to. They could have just left the marks on there and then nothing, but they decided to put that gimmick in there. Moving on to accessories, he comes with two? No, three? Ah. Uh, it depends on how you count weapons where there's just two of them, but they're the same thing. They are blades that are called, hold on, I looked this up, Cuso Pitars. What are those, you ask? Well, they're sort of what it would be like if brass knuckles, a knife, and then a lightsaber all had an orgy and had some sort of weird amalgamous kid together. They're the chosen weapons of a master of Teres Kazi. What's Teres Kazi, you ask? Well, it's a hand-to-hand -hand fighting style invented for a really bad PlayStation 1 fighting game back in the 90s. So thanks to Disney... That's canon now. All joking aside, it was actually kind of a fun little treat to hear the name Teres Kazi thrown around. The knives are pretty cool. In the movie, they have this cool little red laser that goes along the edge. The weapons themselves fit nicely in his hand. The fingers fit in the grooves, but not perfectly. It's painted gold. And there are a lot of intricate details molded into the soft rubber that these knives are made out of. It comes with two of them, no place to store them, and that's really about all I have to say about his knives. Next, he comes with this half cloak thing. It's like the mullet of jackets or coats or cloaks. We got business on the right and then party on the left. He has like a nice business blazer going on right here, suitable for any office environment. On the left hand side, it sort of swoops down over the shoulder, becomes a nice flowing cape, the likes that which Lando would be jealous over. The cape jacket thing is molded in a hard plastic which you know some people don't like some people do like in this case i'm fine with it it hangs properly and it's got a lot of great molded detail and i honestly don't think this would have worked as fabric with the way that it's molded together and it's actually joined on this side with a nice little kind of uh, it's really just a loose piece of plastic that wraps around, but it's supposed to simulate, you know, where it ties in. I'm assuming that's how it keeps on, because otherwise, I have no idea how you would even wear something like this. It's there, and it's it's molded, and it's he wears it, and you can take it off if you want. And that's really about all I have to say about the jacket. I can't really think of anything he didn't come with, but should have. Maybe some coaxium. I think any character in this movie should come with coaxium because it was such a big kind of MacGuffin in the movie. And that's really nitpicking. He comes with his weapons. He comes with a removable cloak. I really can't think of anything else he really should have come with. So I'm going to give him the full point because I, I really can't think of any reason not to give him the full point. Next we have his articulation. How does he move? Is there anything he should have been able to do movement-wise but doesn't? His head moves left to right. It moves forward not very far. Back 
okay. It has a bit of a waggle. His arm moves out this far. It moves all the way around. His arm has a greater than 90 degree bend and a swivel. His wrist has a swivel as well as a hinge. This one hinges this way. He has a torso joint that allows for a swivel. It moves forward this far and back this far. His leg moves forward all the way basically. Back, eh, kinda. He has an upper thigh swivel, double hinged knee, an ankle swivel, a hinge, and a rocker. With this being Dryden Voss's widest stance with both his feet flat on the ground. He moves pretty standardly for Black Series in 2019. His head has that new joint, has a lot of waggle, although it is hindered by the turtleneck. His arms have a full range of movement and a more than 90 degree bend at the elbow. And his legs have this normal amount of, you know, twists and turns that any other Black Series figure legs have. He even has a little bit of an extra joint down here in the ankle that kind of moves this way on top of moving this way. Of all the figures in this wave, his ankles have the best amount of movement, which is kind of weird. So I'm, I'm going to give it the full point because, I mean, he moves like he should. He can hit pretty much any pose you'd want him to hit. So moving on to paint, sculpt, and detail. Well, on first glance, like a lot of figures recently in the Black Series line, he's boring. He's almost one solid color. He's mostly black. It's like he's going through a goth phase, but black is slimming. Black is very chic. But when you look closely, there is a lot of molded detail in this figure. There's vertical etched lines going up and down this entire suit. It's really, really intricate when you look at it. Even his turtleneck thing is like kind of plated and segmented and armored, and it's painted a completely different color from the rest of the suit. He really has a lot of detail despite looking pretty boring. He doesn't have a lot of paint apps, but the paint apps that he has are pretty good. Mostly down in his belt area, he's got what I can only describe as technology on his belt. I really don't know what's going on down there. I don't know why he has things on his belt like that. It looks like he might have sort of like a technological fanny pack. I don't know what it's for. I'm sure maybe someone can tell me, but it's there and it's detailed and sculpted and painted pretty well. On his hand, he has what looks like a Fitbit, but I'm assuming it's just some sort of communicator or watch. It's in the pictures, so it's good that he has it. And it actually is painted and sculpted in a couple different colors and, and pretty intricately. Also on the same hand, he has his ring. The ring's important. I don't know if I want to spoil anything in the movie. I probably have already talked about it, but the ring kind of marks him as an important person in the Black Sun, and he uses it to talk to his boss. A boss that you may have thought was dead if you never bothered to watch the Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels. I am going to give him a 0.75 for paint, sculpt, and detail. Partially because, I mean, he is a little boring looking. And despite how intricate this looks like, he's kind of dull. But on top of that, his torso joint really kind of bugs me. With his jacket off, there's no way to make that torso joint look normal. Either on the back, it's separated a little too far when he goes forward. Or on the front, it's kind of weird because he's going too far back. There isn't a way to really match that seam all the way around his body. With the cloak on, you can't really notice it, but I know it's there. And when I was playing around with the figure, it was the thing that kind of stuck out to me the most. So he's getting docked a little bit for that. So last we have want slash availability. Oh man, here's the thing about this guy. Of all the characters from Solo, he may be the one I wanted the least. And I may be of the people that watched the movie in a minority there, but when they announced him, I was like, huh. Okay, and if I wasn't a Black Series completionist, I may not have even bought him in the first place. That being said, now that I've played with him a little bit, he's actually won me over. I definitely enjoy having this guy in my collection. I really like him. And the cynical in you might say, well, that just sounds like Stockholm Syndrome. You've convinced yourself that you like him because you didn't really want him, but you felt like you had to buy him. Maybe that might be true. I don't know. But the, the truth is, right now, when I look at him, I like him. I appreciate him for what he is. And I'm glad that I had the chance to kind of play with him and... He looks good on my shelf. In terms of availability, he's just number 79 in the normal wave. You can pick him up in any toy store that has him in stock, or you can get him online from your favorite online retailer. I know Hasbro Pulse has had him in stock, Dorkside, Big Bad Toy Store, Entertainment Earth, whatever. You pick it, they probably have it. He might be actually a little too easy to buy because he is kind of the figure that nobody wants. Every time I've seen him in stores, he's the only one from the wave less. I haven't even seen a spare Holdo in stores. I've only seen this guy. I've seen 
two or three of this guy just hanging on pegs with none of the other figures in the wave in sight. But I am going to give him a half a point for this category, mostly because it's hard to shake that initial reaction of not wanting him. Even though I appreciate him now, even though I'm glad he's in my collection now, I still remember those times where I did not want to buy this guy and I was not looking forward to buying him. That's just kind of how it is. So my final thoughts. I really tried to nickel and dime this guy's score down as low as I could, but when I initially gave him some lower scores on some of the categories that I review him on, I just kind of realized I was being unfairly harsh on him and there really isn't anything wrong with him. I really can't manufacture problems with this guy. Other than the fact that I didn't really want him and I don't really feel like he looks like a star. Star Wars character. When you look at him, I just don't see Star Wars. I just don't. But that's fine. He's a brand new character. Sometimes it takes a little while for these things to start to feel like Star Wars. But at the same time, sometimes you look at something and go, yeah, that's Star Wars. But when he's in the movie, he's fine. I like seeing him on screen. It's just looking at him here, something doesn't translate too well. But at the same time, when I'm grading him as a toy, He's a great toy. So I am gonna give him a 4.25 out of five. I really tried to make that lower. And I feel like part of me still could if I wanted to, just because these are my reviews and my opinions, and if I wanted to make it lower for absolutely no reason, I could. But I also try to be fair and unbiased with these and not let my personal opinion get in the way of what is a decent toy. So if you like Solo A Star Wars Story, if you like Paul Bettany figures, if you just like more humans in your life, that have decent face sculpt and fun color changing gimmicks. He's an easy buy and, and definitely looks good on your shelf. Personally, mine sits next to my Jabba the Hutt and other nefarious gangsters. So that's it for my Dryden Voss review. What did you think? Did you agree with my assessment of it? Let me know down in the comments down below. I love to read and respond to every one of those. Like, share, subscribe. Also, there's a couple ways down in the downstairs area that you can support my channel if you want to, up to and including sending things to my PO box if you want to see me open them on my channel. Just let me know when you send it to me. I will include that in my next P.O. Box unboxing, which I do whenever I get things in my P.O. Box. And with that, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting this far. And I'll see you later. Bye.